Hi, my name is Rochelle Smith, entrepreneur, professional speaker, and author. Last time, I re-emphasized the point that who you really are is okay. And this time, I want to close out this entire series on authenticity by simply stating it's so important that we all be true to ourselves. Okay, I mean, that's truly, if we were to sum up authenticity into a few words, be true to yourself so important for you, so important for me, and I could not conclude this series with just sharing some final thoughts and tying this whole concept of authenticity together. Okay, when you think about your life, and as I challenge you in the beginning to think about how authentically you are or are not living your lives, are you basically living a life, are you letting society or someone else dictate your life for you? Okay, or are you making decisions from within? based on what you truly value, what you truly want in life, um, again, reflective of who you truly are. All right, because the, 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 the dividing line between happiness and success, okay, success and failure, <laughs> I mean, there's so many different, you know, dichotomies to this whole concept of authenticity. It just cannot be overemphasized, folks, but you've got to be true to yourself. And that means, as I kicked off the series talking about highlighting, the awesome book, Never Go Back. And so, and again, the, the first chapter in that book was Never Go Back to Something that, that, that Hasn't Worked Before. But to make those decisions, particularly when you're talking about something that isn't working in your life, something that hasn't worked, something that hasn't been working for the last week, month, year, 20, 30, 40 years in some cases, all right, there's no time limit on things that don't work. All right, it's just one's capacity or ability to tolerate something that's not working in their lives. And, and so I often like to say, okay, you're better than that, okay? To, to, to spend your life wasting time, spinning your wheels, being unhappy, being miserable in many cases, waking up with zero zest, zero enthusiasm for your life because you're living a life that you truly don't want to be living, okay? But when that's happened, when that happens to us, we all have to take responsibility and not say it's this person's fault, it's this person's fault. You know, we have to take responsibility because our happiness and what happens in our lives, I mean, is truly up to us. All right, I'm, I'm just a very big proponent on empowerment and making sure that we are, you know, living our best life. But truly, okay, we call the shots when it comes to our lives. It's always easy to sit back and blame and point fingers. But if you're unhappy, folks, it's not this person's fault, it's not their fault, it's your fault. All right, and to make a change, to improve the situation, to improve situations, there may be many in your life, it's up to you, okay? The same is true for me or anyone else. All right, and so, but, but in order to be able to do that, it requires a certain level of honesty, okay, and self-honesty in terms of, you know, are we happy or are we, or are we not happy? Okay, is something working or is something not working? Do we want to be doing this or do we not want to be doing this? Okay, that requires a, a certain level of, of, of honesty that, quite frankly, a lot of people just do not possess <laughs> the capacity to, to be honest with themselves. You know, they would rather go on living, living deluded lives in which they've convinced themselves that, you know, what's really going on isn't what's really going on and whatever. Okay, but we've got to be honest with ourselves if things are to change. Another wonderful quote I love from Dr. Phil's is, we can't change what we won't acknowledge. Okay, and it takes honesty to be able to acknowledge, okay, that what's working in our lives and what's not working in our lives, where we're happy or where we're on, where we're not happy. Okay, and folks, this is something, for those of you who know me personally, you know just I'm a big proponent of this, and you don't ever hear me complain about a situation for long. Um, it, it, it's often, it is funny too, because I think back to the corporate world and my, my last sales roles, and and some of my colleagues would often tell me that it was kind of known, unknown amongst the team that, you know, like, don't call Rochelle to vent and be bitter and be negative because she's just not going to tolerate it. You know, she's always going to come with something positive and then you're going to figure it out after making that mistake one time and you will never come to her, call her again with negativity or complaining or whatever. Um, and that's true. Um, I'm just a big proponent of, again, taking responsibility, not being a victim. Um, and so I myself have had to, again, be emotionally and be honest with myself and, and, and have, a, again, a level of emotional honesty to say, you know what, this situation is working, this situation isn't working. Um, and for those of you who know me personally, you wouldn't witness this in action, where, again, I don't play, I don't complain. I, I think 
about three times. You hear me complain about something, just complain. Um, and, and truly, one one particular, uh, something that's very particular in terms of me that generates in the motivation for change is dread. If I dread a situation, if I dread dealing with a person, I mean, that's always my emphasis. You, you It's almost like clockwork. Um, you know when you start to hear me, you hear those words of dread or, or whatever, a change is going to happen, all right? But, but I've made the decision that, again, I want to be happy. So that means I've got to make those tough decisions. Um, you know, along the way, I've had to make those tough decisions. I mean, professionally, in all aspects of my life, professionally, when I left the corporate world, um, I was so miserable. I mean, like I told you, I, I love my, started out with a small biotech. Um, and, and when I went from the pharmaceutical, big pharmaceutical company on into the biotech world, biotechnology sales um, here in Detroit, and, and started out with a very small startup biotech. And then we got bought out by another biotech, and I was so miserable because it was a, a big culture change. You know, our small little kind of family oriented, um, we, were, we were just a tight knit group. We absolutely loved the company, we were so happy. Um, and then we got bought out by a company that was, you know, the culture based on fear and intimidation and all of that. Um, and so it was just a very big cultural change. And I was miserable. I mean, just miserable. I mean, just hated it. <laughs> I can't emphasize that enough. But I had to make that decision that, you know what? This isn't, you know, despite all the money these folks are paying me and all these benefits and perks and everything, love my territory, love my customers, very tough decision. I made that decision to walk away. All right, and I made that decision to walk away. I didn't have another job lined up. All right, I didn't have a, I didn't have a plan. All right, and it was kind of ironic because Rochelle always has a plan. All right, but that taught me, that experience taught me that even the best laid plans in life, you know, things are going to happen. Curveballs are going to happen. Adversity, setbacks, obstacles are going to happen. All right, but we just got to be able to deal sometimes when things don't work out. All right, you know, how resilient are we? All right, and that that I, I do not regret walking away. Um, I, I honestly think that was the best decision of my life because I had to make the decision. I could not live another day of being unhappy. Okay, I, I just I just something within me just has to be happy, and I can't wake up every day being miserable or unhappy in any situation of my life. And so that was an example. And people were like, "Man, you know that is that is something." And one of my colleagues called me up. A couple days after I made the resignation uh, announcement, and you know, our sales manager had announced it to the team, so people knew. And I remember he called me up. I remember I was in the, the, the Walmart parking lot. It was after work. I was in the Walmart parking lot in South Lyon, Michigan, here about 10 miles away. And I so remember. And he said, Rochelle, I admire your courage. I admire your courage. And I would mention his name, but he's still with the company, and I don't want to kind of put him out there. I admire your courage. And then he said, he, he had a great sense of humor. And I so remember him saying, you know, but Rochelle, basically what you're saying is, you'd rather work nowhere than to work here. <laughs> and I said, you know what? That's absolutely what I'm saying. But you said it first. <laughs> and so it was funny, but, but that's the truth. Again, that was authenticity. That was me being real. I just could not do it. I just could not do it. I just could not be unhappy. All right. And so that required, and that, that situation and others in my life, it just required me to just wake up one day and say, you know what? This isn't working. You know, I'm not doing this another day. You know, and like I said, in all aspects of my life, I've had to make these tough decisions. And it's never easy for me. I can never make an easy, clean break in life. I can never walk away from something or someone and it just be easy. Okay. I get people, you know, blowing up my cell phone and emails and contacted by this person and this person sending me an email and why are you leaving you know whatever um, because you know fortunately and unfortunately I'm a very positive person so as a result of that people tend to take my rejection very personally <laughs> unfortunately um, and so it's just this whole drama that always ensues whenever I leave something or walk away from, from, from a situation or a person whatever the case may be it's always this drama but I'm stronger than the drama and so again, I'm always going to choose to be authentic and admit to myself and again, admit to someone else or someone else or other people that this just is not working for me. Okay. And every time I've made that decision, I have never regretted it. I never, ever once regretted it. So I know this is a tough episode because I know I'm wrapping up this series, but just challenging you to start being real, start being true to yourself, but also being true to other people around you. Because when you're not happy in a situation with a person in a job, in a relationship, Okay, 
the other people on some level, the other person or the other people, there's, you know, signs and symptoms and signals come out. All right, we admit those. All right, and yeah, some people choose to, you know, put on blinders and refuse to face reality and face the truth in, in their interactions with us, so they're surprised, you know, when the decision is made or whatever. Um, but, but truly, when we're not happy, not only do we not know it, but other people know it as well. So don't live a fake life. Don't live a false life. Live a life that's based on truth, based on honesty with yourself and being true to yourself, being true to who you are, and being truly happy. I promise you it's possible. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you to Wonderful Day.